But now we're back into the studio and we're having a very interesting conversation. Yesterday, the federal government had said that they are trying, they're going to regulate, you know, the uh, if our fertility rate, if I may put it that way, and to reduce the number of children each woman or each family is allowed to have. Now, this is because of the alarming statistics that have come out, most especially with regards to predictions for Nigeria in the nearest couple of years, stating that we would have a massive, a massive population but maybe not a fantastic economy. Now, joining us to have this conversation today on the show is a medical doctor, an emergency me medicine doctor based in Manchester. Now, he obtained his Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery from the University of Bristol Medical School. He also hold, uh, holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Pharmacology. He's a co-founder of MedSecute. He's also, he was a winner of the Innovative UK Digital Health Technology Catalyst 2017, as well as other awards. And he is also the creator of Prive Doc app. Joining us today is Dr. Larry Olighton. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. You have such an intimidating profile. Very interesting, though, but congratulations on all of that. Thank you, thank you. So, first of all, I want to find out what your reaction is with regards to the story that broke out, you know, what the federal government had said. You think it's something that is possible. What, what was your first reaction when you heard the story? Well, it was actually shock. I was surprised that, you know, they've actually gone through with it. Um, but also, I, I think, don't think they have gone through well, it. It's just that, like that. They, that well, well, they will. Think, they want to. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, but I think actually something that we need to look at, you know, the average lady in Nigeria that's married and has children has about five, five children. Um, I, I think right now that's starting to change because school fees is the highest contraceptive in Nigeria right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, still, if you keep it at that rate, then, you know, we'll be the one of the largest populations in the whole world in about 30 years. Okay, so you uh, think it's way, it's way to go? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think it's, but I think... Obviously, there's, there's barriers to that as well, but I think, you know, there's something, it's something we need to do and look at. Let's speak about the barriers. What would you say are some of the barriers that, you know, stop family planning from being as important as it should be in Nigeria? We know it's important. We'll come to speak about the importances, mm. but what are some of the barriers that prevent it from being as effective as it should be? So I think the first one will be mostly knowledge. I think people don't really know, you know, what, so how much about family planning. You know, people have a, this sort of um, stigma attached to it as well, saying that, you know, if you, if you use family planning, you, you might not have people to have children in the future, which is absolutely not true. And so things like just knowledge about it um, and also access. And I think people don't have access to it. So I think improving access would be the one of the main ways of actually making sure it's actually effective for the population. I think there's even, there are even I recently found out not too long ago that there's some, there's some religious barriers as well. You know, people in Nigeria would like to say children are a gift from God. Mm. But there's some religions that believe that you should not try to control the amount of children that you have. So I don't know how this is even going to play out or how this is going to work, the suggestion from the government. But let's look at some of the available options when it comes mm. to family planning. Mm. What are the options that are available? So, I mean, they're broadly based into two, two options, essentially. So long-term sort of family planning methods so, um, and also short-term. And so when you talk about long-term, those are sort of implants that you can put into the body um, or sort of um, equipment you can put into the body which will stop the woman from getting pregnant. Um, so, and that you can put that for a set period of time. And then there's short-acting methods as well. So those are tablets which you can take daily, which are also quite effective. Then, of course, we can talk about um, condoms as well. So that's barrier methods. Let, let's talk about some of the disadvantages of them. Do they have advantages and disadvantages? I often hear that if you're on the pill, you would gain a lot of weight. Is that true? What are some of the myths surrounding family planning? Well, you know, anything in medicine, there's side effects. So, you know, some, some ladies or some women who, have, who take the pill, they do get um, increased weight gain. They have weight gain and other risk factors as well, actually, which are more serious. But it's about finding the right one for you. Most contraceptives are actually very safe. So, you know, um, ones that sort of go into the womb as well, they're actually very, very safe as well painless and you know you'd have to worry about taking a tablet every single day so there's many different methods and it's about finding one that actually suits you so that's why i said education and knowledge about it that's the most important thing i actually saw somebody i had a friend once and you know i went to see her and i saw a patch on her skin and i wondered oh did you have a cut i said no I, <laughs> that's family planning yes a patch yes, on yes the skin. The patch, yeah. how effective is that though so actually it's very very effective you know it's about 99 percent effective um it's a patch which releases hormones into the body um, so the hormones just make sure that the, you know it's not possible for you to get pregnant um, at the at the time of having sex while you have the patch. It's quite it lasts quite a long time as well, and you don't have to worry about taking a tablet every every single day or having something inside of you. Okay, um, now let's talk about the fact we we know that when it comes to family planning, we always mm. think about the woman, the woman, the one is always at the receiving <laughs> end. What can the man do apart from using condoms, of course? What can the man do to ensure <laughs> family planning as well? 
he has to bear something. <laughs> I hear that there's research that, you know, can regulate it right now. Yes, yes. So, I mean, there's experimental research. There's research going on which shows that, well, which is testing whether, so just like women have things in their body to control them getting pregnant, so men can have equipment as well in their body to stop them sort of releasing sperm, which will get a woman pregnant. It's very experimental, it's very experimental at the moment, and so not very safe. Okay. Because we don't know how it works, you know, if you have lasting damage or whatnot. So um, it's still in the testing period. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So when they find out that, you know, this works and they, you know, they've checked it and they think that it's safe. Yeah. Will you do this? <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, absolutely. absolutely. I, I think, I, I think, you it, think yeah, you yeah, can. I, I think it's a way forward. But do you think, think that men will be very receptive to this? I think it's easier for them to say, oh, the woman should do this because that's how we've always done it over the years. And there may be a bit of resistance to this change if it is proved that this method of contraceptives for men is very safe. So how do you think the men would receive it? I think there's going to be a lot of resistance. I think there'll be resistance as well. But I think like anything, you know, it takes time. And, you know, I think with time, people accept it as the norm as well. So it's not something that will take, you know, one or two years. It will take maybe decades even. But I think it's the, step for, it's the way forward. Interesting. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for joining us. We've had a very interesting conversation on family planning. And we hope that, you know, you've found out all the options that you need to um, have if you want to if you want to plan your family. Let's talk about, you know, your yours as well. When you want to explain to people. So let's imagine mm -hmm. that somebody is watching now or somebody knows somebody that they want to explain to them the importance of family planning. How would you explain to them? You're a doctor, and I'm sure you get cases like this all the time. Mm -hmm. How do you explain to them the importance of family planning? So I think the best way to explain it is that, you know, family planning is about controlling, it's about controlling your, your, the size of your family and the spacing of when you have children also. You know, it's, it's, it's proven that having children um, between 18 months, giving that gap, is actually beneficial and better for your family life. So having, you know, having family plans to help you regulate that would actually make a big difference and also help you um, to be able to, you know, plan family spacing as well. So I think it's something that people should consider and, you know, actually look at taking forward. All right. Thank you so much for joining us and for having this extensive conversation. We look forward to having you again. But for thank now, you. if people want to follow you on social media, how do they follow you? Do they follow your personal page or should they follow PriveDoc? Um, so there should be a PriveDoc. We have an um, app which we've launched, which um, basically allows any Nigerian anywhere in Nigeria to have access to Nigerian doctors or UK doctors via the phone. So if you have a mobile phone, you can actually video call or chat to a doctor. For free? <laughs> you can download it up for free for sure, yes. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and then you pick a doctor you want to speak There's to. There's so much innovation that is coming into our space with regards to medicine. And, you know, I'm really excited at what we're using technology to do. I'm hoping that one day we won't use technology to take away my job because it does seem like <laughs> technology is taking over this space. But you're, good at, you're good at your job, so no, oh, I doubt it. Oh, thank you. You're too kind. How can people follow you personally? Personally, so it's um, Lanrio Lighton or Dr. Lanrio Lighton on Instagram. Um, that's and do you answer it. questions? Because I know people who start sending messages. Hello, doctor. I have headache. I do get I have, questions. You get that <laughs> a lot, right? And do, you, do you do like over the phone con calls? So, so I mean, I mean, it's very, very diff it's difficult because you have to have an extensive conversation with the patient to actually get, give them the right information. And that's right. why we launched the app as well to make sure actually you can actually have that conversation and actually uh, have it documented I in see. the right way as well. I'm a Google doctor anyway. I'm one of those people. That's that, very bad for you. I know. <laughs> I Google all my symptoms. I check it out and think, oh, it's actually this or this or this. My alter ego is a medical doctor. I love to read medical articles. But that's a conversation for another day. Thank you so much Thank for you joining so much. us. To enjoy more of these our Ugunge videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.